In this video, we are going to look at how to calculate and use Q10, the temperature coefficient. What Q10 does um, functionally on the AP exam is it's going to allow us to calculate the effect of temperature on the metabolic processes. Um, the examples they give are always ectotherms. Um, so the metabolic processes in ectotherms like goldfish or snake or lizards or daphnia. The official definition of Q10 is the factor by which a rate changes with every 10 degrees rise in temperature. That sounds very obnoxious. So let's think about what it really means using my lizards here. So all it is is if I have a lizard whose heart rate is 50 beats per minute at 10 degrees Celsius, there's a number called Q10, which is the factor by which this rate is going to change if I increase the temperature by 10 degrees. So if Q10 is 2, then I multiply 50 times 2 to get our new heart rate of 100 beats per minute. So by increasing the temperature just 10 degrees, because this is an ectothermic, a cold-blooded organism, its heart rate is going to double. So, if that's true, let's do a little practice. If our lizard is has a heart rate of 50 beats per minute at 10 degrees C, and the Q10 is 1.5, what will the rate be when it's 20 degrees C? So, you can do this in your head easily, but if you want to use a calculator, you can do that too. right? And so, we'll just do 50 beats per minute times the Q10, the factor by which the rate changes with a 10 degree increase, and 75. So our new heart rate is 75 if the Q10 is 1.5. Tips to solving problems involving Q10. First of all, it's always good to label your data table with the appropriate variables. Otherwise, it's easy to get mixed up. Also, your answer should be between 2 and 3 uh, in that ballpark. If you're getting answers like 15 or 48, you need to go back and look at your calculations. Also, it's good to round to the nearest whole number as you go. Additionally, I always like to picture what's going on. Sometimes I draw it out, or you can just picture it in your mind, but it also helps keep your, uh, the information in these numbers um, organized in a way that makes sense. So with that, let's look at a little example. So if I have a fish in an experiment, and the water that it's in is 16 degrees C, and it's respiring, and we're going to measure that with OMM is operculum movements per minute, so the amount of times that these little gill flaps open and close. And then if the temperature is raised to 21 degrees C, it respires at 22, or the operculums move 22 times a minute. What is the Q10? That's our question. And so they would just put this whole picture stuff in words and give us this table and say, according to this table, what is the Q10? And give us, and then we would have to find this equation on the back of the formula sheet of the exam. Now, what do all these values mean? K2 and K1. Now, I'm not sure why rate is indicated as K but it is. So, which is 2 and which is 1? Well, K2 is going to be the rate that's higher. K1 is going to be the lower rate. Similarly, your higher temperature is going to be T2, and the lower temperature is going to be T1. Right. So just like the suggestion, it's good to label your chart as step 1. All right, so here's my temperatures. I've got 16 is lower than 21. So 16 is going to be my T1. 21 is going to be T2. My This respiration rate is lower than this, so this is going to be my K1. And my higher rate is going to be K2. 
Great. So step two, we're going to put the values in the equation. So I have uh, uh, K2 over K1, so 22 over 16. I like to use pencil even in these colorful models because it's smart to use pencil when you're doing math. All right, times 10 to the T2 minus T1. So T2 is 21 minus 16. All right, there we go. So we've put the values in the right place, and now it's time to solve. So if we get out our calculator. All right, 22 minus, I'm sorry, 22 divided by 16 is 13.75. I like to round that to, I mean, <laughs> 1.375. I'll round that to 1.4. All right, so I'll do Q10 equals 1.4. All right, raised to the 10 divided by, all right, and 21 minus 16 is 5. 10 minus 5. Ooh, that works out so nice for me because Q10 equals 1.4. 10 divided by 2 is, I mean, 10 divided by 5 is 2, so it's squared, which is really nice because now I can do this on my four function calculator. 1.4 times 1.4, right? And that's going to give us 1.96. And since we like to round to the nearest whole number, then our Q10, right, basically equals 2, right? And so 2 is between 2 and 3, and it's to the whole number. So, hooray! That may be all that the question asks. It may just ask you to find Q10. But, so what? What does that do for us? Now you can use it. So if we have that same fish from before that was at 22 opercular movements per minute at 21 degrees C and Q10 we just found is 2, then we can predict what it will be at 31 degrees C at 10. So all we have to do is multiply 22 by 2, which we could do in our brain easily, but you know, just in case you're wondering, right? 22 times 22 is 44. So we can predict that our fish's respiration rate will be 44 opercular movements per minute, 10 degrees higher than it was here using Q10. So that's how to calculate and use Q10 to help you solve these kinds of questions on the AP Bio exam.